Hi, I'm Pam from the Hooked on Sewing blog. Welcome to my video tutorial. In this video, I'd like to show you how to make these microwave safe bowl cozies. These bowl cozies have quickly become a family favorite handmade item. I first started making these bowl cozies, oh my goodness, probably 10 years or more ago now. Um, they are great for warming up foods. You can put your soup in your bowl, put the bowl in the cozy and set the whole thing in the microwave and warm up your soup. And then when you remove the bowl from the microwave, you can do it without burning your fingers. You can hold on to the bowl. You can use these ears or these flaps here as kind of like pot holders to hold your bowl, but they will keep your hands nice and safe from the hot dish, hot food. So these bowl cozies are also great for cold food. Say you have a nice bowl of ice cream, they will keep your hands from getting cold. Um, they're just really great for hot or cold foods. Now I mentioned that these were microwave safe. Let's talk about what makes these bowls cozies microwave safe. Now this is really important. If you're going to use your bowl cozies in the microwave, they must be made out of 100% cotton materials. That means 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton batting, and 100% cotton thread. Do not skimp on the fabric, the batting, or the thread. Otherwise, you could be creating a fire hazard by making uh, your bowl cozy out of anything other than cotton. I also recommend that when you heat uh, your food and your cozy, that you do it for no more than maybe two minutes at a time. Stir your food, check the cozy, make sure it's not overheating. I've never had that as an issue, but you never know, um, you know, different wattages of microwaves or what could happen. Take a look at what you'll need to make a microwave safe bowl cozy. Okay, for this cozy, you're going to need two 10 and a half inch squares of cotton fabric. You're also going to need two 10 inch squares of batting. You'll need some cotton thread. You'll need some scissors or a rotary cutter, acrylic ruler. Like I said, I like to use, I like to use this Fiskars 12 inch ruler. You'll need a fabric marking pen. So take one piece of fabric and lay it right side down. Take a piece of cotton batting and center it on your cotton fabric. And then you are going to sew straight down from this corner from one corner to the next. And if you want, you can mark that stitching line to make it easier for you to sew. And then the same thing from the other corner. And so we'll take, we'll do, the, we'll repeat that with the other piece of fabric. And again, we're going to stitch from corner to corner, the same with both pieces of these fabrics. And then be sure to take your fabric marking pen and a small ruler with you to your sewing machine. So I have set my sewing machine stitch length to 3.0 millimeters, but you use whatever, you can use a standard stitch length or you can even make it a longer one if you want. And I'm going to stitch from this corner all the way to the other corner, following along down my line. And then I will repeat for the other side, the other corner.
Then I will repeat that for my other fabric section. rotate it and do it for the other corner. Okay, now that I have those two sections stitched, I'm going to create my darts. So I'll fold fabric in half and mark my darts. So I'm going to come over, I'm going to come over one inch and place a mark And I will come down two inches and place a mark. Then I will make a diagonal connecting those two marks. And I'm going to stitch down that line. But first, I will mark the other side. I'm going to flip my fabric over. Make sure these edges are lined up. You can even put a clip in them or a pen if you want to hold those edges together. To, that just helps to keep it uh, lined up. And again, I'm gonna come over one inch and place a mark. I'm gonna then come down two inches, place a mark, draw a diagonal. And then I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that with my other piece of fabric. Again, I'll fold it in half. I'll go ahead and clip those edges. And then I'm gonna make my marks. So, one inch. to see. So one inch. And then we're going to come down two inches. Draw a line. And then flip it over and do the same thing, one inch, two inch, connect those two, and then I'm going to stitch from the top to the point. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end. I'm going to put my stitch length down to 2.4 millimeters, take a few stitches, back stitch, and then just follow this line straight down to the end here to the fold. When I get to the fold, I'm going to back stitch to secure those stitches. Back stitch, forward stitch, cut my thread. Then I will flip this over because I like to work from the selvage or the cut edge the cut edge to the fold. So line this up, lower my needle. I'll repeat with the other one that I have marked. Flip my fabric. 
fabric over. And now I'm going to refold this fabric. There I have my two darts. I'm going to refold it just like this. Line up these raw edges on the corner there. Use my clip to hold it in place. Do the same thing with the other corner. And then I'm going to mark my folds. one inch and come down two inches flip this over one inch come down two inches up and then I'm going to stitch this again flip it over Follow along this line again. Okay, then I'm going to repeat that with the other one. Fold it in half, line up these corners, the bra edges first. Clip that. Same with the other corner make my marks one inch and then come down two inches make a diagonal mark that's for my stitch line remember I'm going to flip it over Going to measure over one inch, come down two inches, and then draw my line. And re stitch those darts. I have all four darts in this piece and all four darts in this piece. The next thing we're going to do is to trim these darts. This just helps to reduce the bulk in those seams. Do the same thing for the other two pieces, the other piece, the other four corners. There's one, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to take one of the pieces and turn it so that the right sides are together and insert those. I'm going to take my clips. You can also use pens if you want. 
I prefer to use these wonder clips. We're going to line up the corners, line up each corner, clip it in place, line up the next corner, clip it in place, next corner, Okay, next I'm going to line up the starts. So I'm going to take this seam and fold it this way. And this seam and fold it that way so they kind of nest in there. And then clip that. That way, that way. You could also fold these open, open these up like this, and then clip them in place. I just prefer to kind of nest my seams. And what I mean by nesting is this seam and this seam on the other piece, and they're just gonna kind of butt up against one another so that they kind of nest there. They just fit nice and snug. One seam butts up against the other. And then I have my seam allowances for the darts going opposite directions. Okay. Now we're ready to stitch this, but we do want to leave an opening for turning. So I'm gonna put this pen in there just as a reminder to me, just as a reminder to me that I'm gonna leave that open. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around. I'm going to start stitching and I'm gonna back stitch to secure my stitches. get to the corner I'm going to stop with my needle down raise my presser foot rotate my fabric lower my presser foot and continue sewing when I get to these darts I actually am going to kind of sew just like in a V so I'm going to try to keep my stitch 3 8 inch away from my needle when I get to this stitch line, I can rotate my fabric by raising the presser foot and rotating it. Again, I'm going to stop here because I need to leave an opening for turning, but I'm going to come around this corner first. 
So when I get to the corner, I'll stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot, rotate my fabric, lower my presser foot, and continue stitching just a few stitches because I don't like to leave it at the corner. So I'm just going to stitch forward and stitch. All right. The next thing that we need to do is to clip these corners. There's one. Two. This just helps to remove the bulk in those seams when you turn it right side out so that it lays better. I'm also going to clip these curves here. I'm going to clip. Just don't clip your thread. one of these curves maybe a couple times be careful that you don't stitch through your stitching okay now we are ready to turn this right side out I didn't leave myself a very big opening, but that's okay. I'm reaching in. I'm going to the opposite corner of where I left my opening. And I'm kind of gathering this up in my hand until my thumb gets all the way down here. And then I'm gonna push that in and pull it out through this opening. Being careful not to rip your stitches, you just Kind of work it and keep pulling, working around, keep pulling. Yeah, I left that kind of tight, but it's okay. Just take my time and it'll all work out through that opening. There. I'm going to take my bone folder. Um, you can use a wooden dowel. You can use uh, the blunt end of a pen or a pencil. You can just use your finger. But you want to reach in there and you want to poke out each corner. Just poke out the seams really good. Then I'm going to use my bone folder because it can get in there and push those corners out a little better than my fingers. And see how I just push that? And let's see if we can get this one to look a little nicer. There we go. And over here maybe. And this last one. Okay. Next, I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and then I'll come back and we're going to top stitch around it.
this is where we have that opening. You can pin or clip that in place if you want. And we're just gonna stitch all the way around the perimeter of our cozy. I, again, I'm gonna use about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, and I'm gonna use a 3.0 millimeter stitch length. My sewing machine has a locking stitch, so I'm gonna do that first. If you don't have a locking stitch on your machine, you can simply backstitch to secure your threads. I'm gonna take a few stitches forward. Remember your darts, you can kind of feel it. Those should be going in opposite directions. You can just kind of use your hand to kind of push those. So down to that dart, to that seam, raise your presser foot and kind of rotate your fabric a little bit. Lower the presser foot and continue stitching to the next corner. I stopped right where this stitch line is. Raise my presser foot, rotate, lower my presser foot, and I'm gonna continue sewing down to my next dart. Now when I get to this dart, I am gonna stop when I get to this seam so I can rotate the fabric. So stitch down to that seam. More, there we go. Raise my presser foot, rotate my fabric, and continue on. I'm back to where I started. I'm just gonna stitch just past that and then lock my stitches. Again, if your machine doesn't have a locking stitch, you can just take a couple of back stitches to secure your stitches. Then I will trim off these threads. And technically our cozy is done, but I'm gonna do a second row of stitching around. Again, lock my stitches. I'm gonna to stitch to this seam here, or that stitching, not a seam. Raise my presser foot, rotate, and stitch to my dart. I'm actually lining up my presser foot with the edge of my fabric, and I have my needle in the middle position.
Just make sure the fabric is nice and smooth where your darts are. Take your time. You can kind of feel with your fingers that the fabric is smooth or there's any bumps, so pay attention to that. And now I'm back to the beginning. I'm going to use my locking stitch when I get there. Trim off these threads. And there is my bowl cozy. Okay, so that was our tutorial on how to sew a bowl cozy. I forgot to mention a couple of things. I like to use these wonder clips in my sewing projects. I will leave a link below to those. I also like to keep a pair of scissors handy just right by my sewing machine at all times. It helps me snip threads, trim corners, clip curves, but I keep these handy at my, by my sewing machine. You may also find it handy to use this bone folder or some other object to help you push your corners out. I use this all the time. And these are the two bowl cozies that I've made. The one I showed you in the tutorial has corners. The one I previously made, I rounded off the corners. The corners, pointed one, you can see that it gives you more handle to hold on to. But I also find that those corners sometimes get in the way. It's just a personal preference. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial on how to sew these microwave safe bowl cozies. I hope you enjoyed these, this tutorial. I think that your family and your friends will love these bowl cozies and once you make one you'll be wanting to make more. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. If you found this helpful be sure to like it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and come over to the Hooked on Sewing blog and subscribe to my newsletter so you'll be notified when new tutorials and patterns are made available for sewists just like you. Thank you.